So, who are you repping? Like, we all have our favorite brands. Like, type in the chat. What are you wearing right now? Like, I got this Freed Sailors shirt on. I got some Russell shorts. Like, yeah, type in your favorite brands. How about, what's your favorite surf clothing brand? Type it in. Like, my favorite would be Hurley. Close second is Billabong. How about your favorite shoe brand? Mine is Nike, for sure. Got to go with Nike. But like growing up, me and my brothers, we wore just free school sports t-shirts every single day. Literally every day. We had one for every day of the month. And then I went off to college and I went mainstream. I uh, got a job at Abercrombie & Fitch and I started repping skinny jeans and tight t-shirts. And I was all about that pretty boy life. And here's a Facebook uh, post I posted way back then. It's a photo of me in my freshman year of college, and I'm wearing a Hollister shirt. And I have a fake lip ring in, by the way, too. But look at the comments. The first one here is from Kyle. It says, Brady, you poser. You're wearing a Hollister shirt. Me and Aaron are very disappointed. Aaron says, Yes, very disappointed. You are tarnishing the Arneson image. Then my own dad comments, I agree with Aaron. Like, being an Arneson is something me, Kyle, and Aaron take very seriously. And here is a 30 second clip from the Arneson Nation documentary that we produced. Your family is the most precious thing you have. The friends you have today may not be there in the future, but your family will always be your family. Arneson Nation is what it is today because of the young men and women who decided to take that next step to continue the legacy, the legacy that is Arneson Nation. Every family has a legacy about who you are and what you do. The Cole Strings, the Williams, the Zapatas, the Ersandos. And when I started wearing skinny jeans, I was not repping the Arneson name. Uh, we were all about that free t-shirt life. But as Christians, God is calling us to represent Him well. And when we don't, we are breaking the second commandment. Exodus 27 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. So the name of God is way better than the name Arneson. And it's way better than the name Brady. And we don't live for the name on the back of our jerseys. We live for the name on the front of our jerseys. The name that's on our hearts. The name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are repping G-O-D, God. As Christians, we are no longer under the Old Testament law. That law was for a certain people for a certain time given by God. We are under the new way of Jesus Christ. His blood shed for you on the cross because he loves you a lot. And the New Testament repeats many of the Old Testament laws. And that's why they apply to our lives today. And we don't follow the Ten Commandments out of like a legalistic mindset. Like we follow the commandments that God has given to us because we love him and he loves us too. And some Christians differ on how they number the Ten Commandments. And by combining the first two together or combining the last two together. And when we go through them, we're going to combine both sets together. So, you shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not worship any idols. We're going to combine those two together and count that as number one. And today we're talking about number two, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So, when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray in Matthew 6, 9, he began like this. He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. It's the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, yeah? And Jesus says we are to hallow his name. That means to make holy. 
to set apart, to like honor as sacred. And God's name hits different. And it's special. It is the name above all names. In Philippians 2, 9 through 11, it says, God exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Like There is power in the name of Jesus and everyone must honor and worship the name of Jesus. And some Christians pray by saying, in Jesus' name, amen. And we do that because there's power in the name of Jesus. And last fall, we did a whole sermon series on the names of God. We talked about there's, there's over 1,000 names of God that are listed in the Bible. And we talked about like God's name, all consuming fire, prince of peace, wonderful counselor, bread of life. And all these names describe God's awesomeness and wonder. And the commandment says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Like you may ask, which name are we talking about here? There's like a thousand. All the names, brah. Do not take them in vain. And the original Hebrew word, For take is also defined as lift up, to bear or to carry. So, and also the word vain means empty, worthless, no substance, no value, or no importance. So God is calling us not to lift up his name without any value or importance. So let's PTL, not OMG. So Praise the Lord, if you don't know what that is. But if you're like me, growing up in church, keeping this commandment was very, very stressed and emphasized because it's one of the commandments that's very easy to break. And here's the question. Is it a sin to say, oh my God? Yes, straight up. That is breaking this commandment to a T. Like your Sunday school teachers are right. And speaking the name of God needs to be done with great honor and respect. Like you got to at least be talking to him or about him, yeah? And when we use God's name as an exclamation, you are not talking to God or about him. We are lifting up his name without any value or importance. And when you like stub your toe and you say, Jesus Christ, or when your friend surprises you with a gift and you're like, oh my God, wow, or your team loses at the very end of the game and you're like, oh God. Like, we don't think about it because using God's name in vain is so common among Christians too. It's just acceptable. But just because everyone's doing it doesn't make it okay. And why don't people use other God's names in vain? Like, why don't we say like, uh, oh my Buddha, oh my Mohammed, oh my Zeus. It's because there's no power in those names. Jesus' name hits different and is the name above all names. And people know that. And that's why they choose to bring God's name down because they know how high it is already. And when we use God's name disrespectively, we are just like the soldiers at the cross that were mocking Jesus. In Luke 23, 37 and 38, the Roman soldiers hung a sign above Jesus on the cross that said, King of the Jews. And they said, like, if you are king of the Jews, come down and save yourself. And that is one of Jesus' names, King of the Jews. And when we use God's name disrespectively or with no value or importance, we are mocking the name of Jesus in a similar way, just like the soldiers were to Jesus on the cross. And sometimes, what about if you say something like, God damn it or damn you? Like, what about that? Like, if we're mad at someone or mad at something and it becomes like an exclamation, it becomes like a curse towards someone. But what you are saying is you want God to damn them to hell or God to damn this thing to hell. But first off, God is the judge, not you. And God has the power to damn, not you. And you should not be hating on people. We're talking about that later in the fifth commandment. But James 3, 9 and 10 says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. 
can both fresh water and salt water come from the same spring? So, when we use God's name in vain, you are not repping God well. It's very hypocritical to PTL and OMG, to call yourself a Christian, to be a Christian, and also use the words, oh my God and God damn it. They're not work together. It's very hypocritical to PTL and OMG. If you're, even if you're with the boys, even with your, when you're at work, even in the locker room, even when you're with, like surprised or frustrated, you are an ocean. Don't let your mouth become alawai. But what about if you say, you text OMG, or you say, oh my gosh, or you say, geez, or God darn it. Like back in high school, me and Kyle and some friends, we created our own entire language. Like we literally, everyone in our high school knew of this language and some, like most of them used it too. And we, it was like main like exclamations, names we'd call each other, like adjectives and verbs. It was an entire language. Some of the words were like pank, miter, sensei, bg, oven, gedza. Like I'm not joking. Like I'd walk into a, a random classroom and I'd see the word pank, like graffitied on the marker board. I'd be walking through the hallway and I'd hear someone call their friend a big getter. Or I like graduated high school and I'd see underclassmen posting on their Facebook walls using our language. Like This was crazy. But one thing, as I look back on it now, one of the main words that we used was ged, G-E-D, an obvious knockoff variation of God, G-O-D. And is that okay to say, oh my ged, or oh my gosh, or geez, is that okay? Um, like it, it's just words. Yeah. We're not even referencing God, not even thinking about God when we say it, but that's the problem. Exactly. These words are not God's name, but they're obviously knockoffs of God's name. Check your heart. I'm convicted that it is sinful after thinking about it. And I've never said, oh my gosh, or OMG, never used those words. But one word that I do use is geez. Like I've been using this in my vocabulary since middle school and I'm trying to stop it, you know, but our words are our habits that are hard to break. Yeah. And I think when God said, you shall not take the name of the Lord, your God in vain. I don't think that he meant, hey, change one letter and try to soften the pain on me a little bit. No, I think God was saying, like, get out of there. Don't even come close to that. Stop in the name of love, right? And let's PTL not OMG. Like, we love God by lifting his name high, by praising him, by worshiping him, by talking about him respectively, by honoring him, by setting him apart, and using his name when we are talking to him or about him. And Jesus is the name above all names, the most powerful name. Like words are powerful and what you say matters. And we cannot throw around God's name lightly. So we can say, we can sing, oh my God, in praise. We can go throughout our day and say, thank God. And let's work on our Alawai mouths and help the Holy Spirit work in our lives to create some ocean of sparkly crystal clear, clear water and if you hear me say geez call me out on it don't let me don't let my mouth stay all a while like call me out if i say geez and let's ptl not omg because we need to be repping god well together and what if i told you there is so much more to this commandment than just what we just talked about that's like what we grew up knowing, but there is so much more than just the words we say to the second commandment because our actions speak louder than words. We must be repping Jesus with our whole entire lives. And you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Like I said in the Hebrew, the word is actually like lift up, bear, or carry. That's the word take. So as Christians, we bear Jesus' name. We carry Jesus' name with us every day. It's like a name tag. It's like a big 
red arrow pointing down like this guy bears Jesus name. And I know exactly how that feels like growing up as a pastor's kid. Like, I don't know, like people be like, oh, don't swear I'm the pastor's kid. Or like I won the most innocent award for my senior class. Like sometimes I thought people felt like I felt like I was God himself the way some people treated me and like where else is a person so defined by their dad's job is dumb (laughs) but my dad being a pastor I was given the name pastor's son and guys as Christians our father being God we are given the names God's son and God's daughter and we need to live to rep Jesus to this world. It's Jesus' nation, and it's all eyes on us if you like it or not. First Peter 2 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. So this is why God made the promise to Abraham. This is why God gave Moses the Ten Commandments in the first place so Christians can be chosen, royal, holy, set apart, so we can be a light to bring people out of the darkness back into the light. So we can. Our mission is to rep Jesus to the entire world and to bless the world through Him. And we all have work uniforms, yeah? Like we all dress up, look nice, wear aloha shirts, khakis, maybe slippers still. But like Kyle wears red for work. Petey and Gabe, they have a closets all full of the same shirt They're like oh which neon yellow shirt should I wear today <laughs> and when I started working at Abercrombie Fitch um, my job title was model and my job duty was to stand by the front door to fold clothes and to say sup the smile and the nod that's where I learned how to say what's up but My job was to represent the store, to represent the brand. And what if I was like folding clothes and someone walks by and I was like, you're ugly. Go away. You belong at Ross. Love Ross. Or what if I gave him stink eye and I had messy hair and I smelled like French French fries. Yeah, like no one would want to come into the store. I would not be a rep in Abercrombie well. And as Christians, we are sons and daughters of God. And your friends, the friends in your life and all the people you know, they know you are a Christian and it's all eyes on you. And if you're living with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you're sleeping over at their house, or if you're getting drunk on high on the weekends, or if you're so prideful, you always have to have the last word, or you're slacking off at work, you are not repping God well. And no one is going to want to become a Christian. Walk into the store because you smell just like them. Stinky french fries. and Because, like, oh, Christians sleep with their boyfriends too. Oh, oh, Christians get high too. Like, oh, Christians are stuck up and, and lazy too. Like, then I guess it's okay for me to do those things, yeah? And... Why would I want to become a Christian? Because they're not any different than us. Like That's what non-Christians would be thinking. In Matthew 15, 7 through 9, Jesus was confronting some legalistic teachers and he said, You hypocrites, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. And if you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. And if you're a Christian, you need to follow God. And we need to be repping Jesus with our entire lives, 24-7, all the time. And we cannot have, like, pet sins that we like to keep and take care of. Like, we need to get rid of those because our actions speak louder than words. And it's all eyes on us. And, of course, we aren't perfect. And that's what we need to share with the non-Christians. And we be open, vulnerable, authentic with them. Be like, hey... I struggle with a lot of the same things as you, but Jesus gets me through it with this battle and sin. And, but still, even though we value being authentic and real, there is still no excuse for sin. Romans 6, 1 and 2 says, We 
What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. So, like, when we aren't following God, we are not repping God well. And non-Christians will have no desire to become Christians because we'd be just like them anyways. And John fifteen fourteen says, If you love me, obey my commandments. And if you are a Christian and love Jesus, God is calling you to obey his commandments and follow him so you can be repping Jesus well. And Matthew five sixteen says, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So when we rep God well, others will see that and they'll be like, I want what he has. Like, why is he so happy, so peaceful through this whole COVID-19 situation? Like, He lost his job and he seems okay. It's because we have God. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. He's constant. That never changes. And we can share that with them when they ask. We can share that with them before they ask too. Like God is our light. We need to bring our friends and co-workers, family out of the darkness and into the light through the power of the Holy Spirit, God working in them through us because our actions speak louder than words. And we love God by repping Him. Second Corinthians 5.20 says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making His appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead come back to God. So did you know along the, the Pali Highway over there, there are foreign embassies or consulates for all these countries. Korea, the Philippines, Japan, Marshall Islands, France, Taipei, Mexico, Sweden, Netherlands, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Belgium, Poland, Peru, Tonga, Australia, Finland, Chile, Malaysia, Thailand, Micronesia, Kiribati, and Luxembourg. Like, like a mile away from here. All these countries have their ambassadors and their representatives to come to America to represent their countries well. And guys, we are Christ's ambassadors. Our job in Hawaii or wherever you are, we are here chosen on purpose for a purpose to rep God to our friends, our family, our co-workers, the people we see, our neighbors every single day. God is calling you to rep Jesus, to bless the world through you. And it's all we're saying, come back to God through our words and our actions. And as ambassadors, this is our calling to rep Jesus 24-7. And Colossians 3.17 says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So we love God by honoring his name through our words and our actions and our entire lives. And if you read the second part of this commandment in Exodus 27, it says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. So, like, all sin deserves punishment. But we see just how personal and important this commandment is to God. Like, he reminds us of the consequences. He reminds if we disobey it. And here on earth, there is consequences to sin. And forever, if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, there's forever a consequence of sin, and that is hell. And the truth is, this commandment to not take the name of the Lord our God in vain, it's like really hard to keep because it encompasses our entire lives. And I think we've all broken it once already. So we deserve hell. And, but it's so comforting to know that Jesus wrapped God perfectly, 100%. 1 Peter 2, 2, 2 says, He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Like Jesus was perfect in his words and his actions. And that is the comfort we can rest in because we so often mess up with our words and actions. There's no excuse for sin. But we have a Savior who lived that perfect life for us. And he never sinned once. And that's that verse earlier about the ambassadors, it continues in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, for our sake, he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus took the punishment that we deserve from the second commandment, and he took that punishment for us so that we may become righteous, holy, and perfect in the eyes of God. And Acts 4.12 says, 
Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So there is no other name, none but Jesus. And Jesus is the only way. And if you realize today that you aren't perfect, that you've broken this commandment, that you are a sinner and that you need Jesus, like you can call on the name of the Lord today and Jesus is listening right now. And you can ask him into your life to be your savior. And Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Straight up. So if, if you want to call on the name of Jesus, the most powerful name, the name above all names, and ask him into your life to be your savior from sin right now for the first time. Or maybe today you came to understand at a deeper level what the second commandment means. And you want to commit your life to Jesus to follow this second commandment. You're committing yourself to follow this commandment. Um, you can pray this prayer after me. So, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you in my life. Please forgive me of my sins. I surrender my life to you. You are my Savior. You are all I need. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for always being with me. Help me live for you. I love you, Jesus. Amen. So, who are you repping? Jesus. That's right.